I have joining me from our Abuja studio, uh, Honorable Washington Osifo is a member elect of the Edo House of Assembly and from Benin City is Honorable Osaiho Yoha is a, a special advisor to the governor on political aff ad, uh, affairs. Thank you so much gentlemen for coming tonight. Let me begin with uh, Honorable Osifo. Uh, thank you so much for coming tonight. What has happened today? We've seen uh, some removers. Uh, another one has happened today. What do you think is playing out in your state? Well, Shion, good evening. Thank you for having me. Good evening, Nigerians. <clears throat> I'm sure I particularly like the way you, you introduced the matter. We have seen another one today. With this government, it's almost um, one day, one trouble. And uh, the latest is the removal or the impeachment of... Uh, you know, I don't know. I don't even know what to call it. You say the, remo the impeachment of Yekini Idiaye, um, um, Deputy Speaker, as it then was. You know, but for me, you know, there is no, there's been no House of Assembly in, in Edo states. What they call House of Assembly to me is a contraption. I think what happened uh, four days ago, just like you already know, was that he led um, some of his colleagues, you know, to our candidate, Pastor Saige Zayamu, of the All Progressives Congress. Um, this is democracy, and you have a right to express your, your own will and make your choice. And they made their choice as party men to say that despite what has happened in the, in the past one year, under the leadership um, um, of uh, Godwin Obaseki, you know, they have realized, for all of us, we, have, we always have a time to tell our stories. For them, it was only four days ago that they told us. For us, we said it over a year ago, that this government was... Um, standing on the head of democracy. And for us, we wouldn't want to queue behind such uh, irresponsible conduct. That will embarrass democracy. And if uh, the House of Assembly does not exist, then it means that democracy does not exist. And of course, for the past one year, what has existed in, in, in those states is anarchy, is uh, autocracy, and all of that. So it, it, um, my, my brother, day before yesterday, aligning with his political party, the All Progressives Congress, de decided to get out with others to support the, the, our governorship candidate. Of course, just in their way, you know, their normal way, they are known for it, lawlessness. You know, they thought that the proper thing to do, they would not allow him to make his choice, then the, the next thing would be to take him out. And the reason why it's a bit difficult for me, you know, to speak on these issues today is because the House of Assembly as it is tagged today does not exist. Therefore, the position of the deputy governor, of, of the deputy speaker, never existed. That is the way it is before now. And that is the way it is. I think what is going to say, say, collection of friends. You know, there were 10 at some point. Um, four of them decided to leave, to leave that friendship. And they pegged 10 with a, polit a political party that they originally belonged to. And on, supported on, on, the candidate on, on, of, of C4, For me, let me allow, he was uh, never uh, removed as, are, dep as deputy speaker. Just a moment. For me, he was, uh, he was excused as a friend. Let me allow Honorable Yoha to, to come into the conversation. You, you heard what Honorable Sifo has said, describing the situation in uh, Edo State under Governor Obaseki. How do you react to it? Well, uh, thank you, Sean. Thank you, Nigerians. Good evening. Um, the issue is very, very clear. Uh, the lawmakers came together today and... Uh, the Edo State House of Assembly presently has uh, members from two political parties. Before now, it had to this time, it was just one political party. And uh, now that uh, <clears throat> the governor moved and then majority of the members moved to the PDP, the position for deputy speaker simply uh, has to go to the majority. And then they sat down and then they, when the uh, former deputy speaker is a member of the APC, as we speak, so why should he expect that he would uh, continue to be deputy speaker when uh, he's an in the minority uh, party? So if there are positions from minority parties, like uh, when I was in the House of Assembly before, we had a minority leader and we had a minority whip. So those are the kind of positions that he can aspire to because the majority of the members in the House of Assembly, as we speak, are members of the PDP. It's, that sim it's simply the case. So there's no need for us to start uh, creating storms out of teacups. It's... Uh, the normal thing that happens in Parliament. I think it's a season of uh, removal of deputy speakers because in June we had the, the deputy speaker of uh, Kaduna was removed. In July it was on those stones. So today is uh, those stones. So there is nothing uh, out of the ordinary in the moves. So that's uh, that's what it, that's what happened today.
Let's take a break. And when we come back, the both honorables, one staff in the sixth assembly in Edo State, one staff uh, in the seventh assembly and is uh, re elected. Uh, we are dissecting the governorship race in Edo State. We we'll talk about what has happened in the Obaseki family and how the family is divided along party lines. That's next on the program, everyone. Turn us again. Thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us. So we're discussing the developments in Edo. So let's get back to the conversation. Honorable Washington Osiva and Honorable Zaiwo Ioha from Benin City. Both of them are weighing in on this matter tonight. Let me go back to Abuja with Honorable Osifo. What we saw today were members of the Obaseki family said, look, those last week who said the supporting pastor Osage is a yamu, they're on their own, and in fact, they are going to discipline them. And we have some of them who say they're supporting Governor Obaseki. What is happening? Well, for me, I, I don't like um, to be tagged as a busybody. I am not a member of the Obaseki family, and they have a right to peg, to peg a pitch tent with whoever they want to pitch tent with. You know, the governor comes from, uh, belongs to the family of Baseki, and Osage Izeyamu belongs to the Izeyamu family. And uh, if in their wisdom, members of his family decided in their wisdom for whatever reason, maybe including, uh, including uh, but not limited to abandoning the family while he, he existed as a governor, and they decided to say, instead of supporting a man who didn't respect the family, who is dragging the name of the family to the mud, why not let me support another another uh, candidate, you know, of another political party and of another family, at least to give opportunity to the public to know that the name of Baseki, we have great people with good conscience. We are not all like, like, like Godwin or Baseki. So for me, for me, that is not an issue. And if you don't even come to, to, to national, national TV, except just to waste the time. But I think what I particularly want to talk about is that the, if you look at what is happening in those states today, I am, I am sad to listen to my brother, my very good friend, Usaibobo Yoha, say that it is the turn to, to, to take away deputy governors. I mean, let us respect the entity called Nigeria and the game called democracy. It is not just for fun. It is an opportunity for responsible leaders to lead their people and, and cause development, peace, and progress to, to, to reign in their domain. So if it says that it's just fun, then it, is, it, is, it tells you what we are doing in those states and what the governor is doing. Now, let me tell you. For we have 18 local governments in Edo State. As we speak, the moment the governor took his trade to the, the, to, from, the PD, from the APC to the PDP, exactly what he instructed the local government chairman to do was to ensure that they, rain, they, they bring the reign of terror on all councillors, those who refuse to, to go with him. As we speak today, it is either they are, they, they are suspended, a, a, a few suspending majority, or their salaries are not, are not being paid because they didn't, they didn't go with him to PDP. Now, what the government must know is that what makes democracy supreme is, this, is, the, is the right of choice, to make a choice. Therefore, if he says that if you do not go with him to PDP, your salary is either stopped or you are removed from office, what it also means is that he cannot be crying and shouting that there will be violence when he, by reason of what he's doing now, is the one sponsoring violence. And I want to tell my brother, he's a young man like me and he's my very good friend. Politics has come and politics will go. But the truth is that what we are known for as, after four years, we really, we, 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 people, people that we are governing today or we are leading today, we, we have to estray us. We will continue to live with the people. APC will go, PDP will go. One day, because APC, PDP never was at some point. APC never was. But the side where you are, you were. Washington was there. Who says tomorrow we'll continue to be in, in these two political parties? I know who also says that tomorrow you will continue to be Gordon Obasaki's friend. He was once my friend. We had to disagree on political, on political issues. And today, I am saying, and majority of us are saying, that he's leading a door in the wrong direction, and we will not go for him with him. And I'm sure that's what some of his families are also saying. We don't want to go with you so that we don't label the family, the great Obaseki family, you know, in the image and in the image. Now, honorable, you are to, uh, uh, God, uh, to, to, to react to what you said. Honorable, uh, what is happening? Uh, if you react to what Honorable Sifo has said, especially the happenings in the Obaseki family, how would they be divided over one of their own? Well, um, yeah, let me just uh, put in proper perspective. Uh, the Obaseki family is one of the largest families in Benin. You understand? 
And uh, if uh, I think the governor has over 500 to 700 first cousins. So it's a very, very huge family. And then you don't expect for people not to have divergent views. They have a right. You cannot tell me that every Obaseki should be in PDP or they should all be in the APC. They will have APC members. So if the APC members come and if really our politics had ideology, there is reason for any, any, any Obaseki to say that uh, this is my party, the APC. I will not support anybody in PDP. It doesn't have to be whether, whether it's my brother or my cousin is irrelevant. But however, you should know where, why the governor is having, the, uh, why politicians are finding, a couple of politicians are finding it difficult with the governor because he has, uh, there's a paradigm shift in how things are normally done. Because we are looking at an era today where we never, nobody ever thought of COVID, that COVID was going to come. So you can see that our health system has been in shambles and we have been exposed by COVID. So the governor came with a new ideology in politics to let us fix the system. Unlike uh, what we are used to in Nigeria, where a family member comes into politics and then everybody now looks, oh, it's our turn to take from the Nigerian cake. So the man has come in to say, probably one or two people are disappointed. It is expected, but the man doesn't have nepotistic tendencies. So he has come, he has, he has told everybody that I have come to work for the people. Because if you are saying as politicians that we I should work for only you. If I even concentrate on my family, my family, the kind of, uh, the membership of my family, the volume of people that we have in my family, the, the money, uh, the whole money that is even made for the state will not be enough for them. So the man has come to work for the people. He didn't come to work for his family. He didn't come to work for his party members. He came to work for the generality of adult people. So a lot of, a couple of people would definitely not be happy with the way things are panned out. But what does it matter when the generality of adult people. As we see today, both in the country and in the diaspora, they are all shouting, anywhere you go, we go. And everybody's with the governor. Those cannot wait. We are just chilling. We are happy. We are just waiting for September 19th. I believe that if we had uh, mailing voting, like we have in the United States, in some states in the United States, by now about 90% of the votes will be cast. And uh, by now, Enek would have known the direction of uh, this election or this contest. There's no contest here, Sheon. It's very, very clear. There's only one party in Edo State, as we speak. All right. So, uh, Honorable Sifo, you heard him. He said if, it, if uh, early votes were allowed, his uh, candidate, Governor Baseki, would have won by now. What's your reaction? Well, first, our sacred opinion is free. For him, that is, uh, that is for him for him to say, and he has, uh, I respect his opinion. But the truth is that September 19th, that, is, that he mentioned, is sacrosanct. It's not except uh, I make uh, things otherwise. Um, so it's not for him to say, it's for a do, for a do people to say. I've always listened to him that everybody all over the, all over the world, you know, and even though everybody in a, in a do is endorsing him. For me, he should also know that I'm a member, I'm, uh, I'm a member of the Edo, Edo political, uh, Edo political uh, group. You know, I come from Edo. That includes me from the way he's counting it, that he says everybody. So that's a huge fallacy. And if you have, even if you have to start from there, this, uh, his submission is already faulty. So I'm not part of it. My family is not part of it. And uh, my friends are not part of it. The 14 other members not, uh, not sworn in are not part of it. And uh, the four who just joined us now, they are not part of it. So how can he say, how can he say he's part of it? And he's also seen, he's arguing on, on the TV to say that the Obaseki family is large. Uh, do, uh, some of them can decide to also work against the family. It is allowed. And by his own conclusion, he says, he says everybody. So what about he's reprobating and appropriating? So he doesn't really follow that way. But, Politics, what we are known for, politicians, is that we talk too much. So let's wait and see, you know. <laughs> let's wait and see what happens on, on September 19th. I, lo I love to be, to, be remind to be remembered for what I didn't say, but what I worked to achieve. To achieve. Right, let, let me, let, let, I'll count that as perhaps your uh, closing thought. Let me get that of um, Honorable you are on, on what has happened uh, and what he said, especially with the reaction of uh, the APC today saying that, uh, the governor has, uh, is distracted from governance that is focusing more on campaigns. Well, um, you can see, Sharon, that uh, they are, APC, as we speak, they are currently bereft of ideas. They are, they are, they, they've scored a lot of own goals, and they are victims of their own uh, evil machinations by one man who just... Uh, 
changed the whole uh, uh, <clears throat> landscape in Edo from what it was before now. Because two years ago, before the national, former national chairman from decided to come up with the EPM, everybody was shouting. Even the PDP members then, was, they were saying that, look, we, for the next governorship election, we are going to vote APC. We are going to vote for the person, but we're not basically. When we're telling him, when we're warning, but people pay deaf, deaf ears at the national level that this party, APC, as we speak today, is a bad governor, not Baseki, because of his performance, his stellar performance through these three years plus. That is, but they didn't listen to us. But now they're crying over speech. They, they, they don't have anything to campaign with. And then we, are, we, we can see the disgrace that is going on. For Christ's sake, if a governor, a man that served the state for eight years, and then became national chairman of a party cannot be looked at as a role model. I mean, who should we start looking at as role model, models? How should we teach our children? For someone to come out four years ago to say a lot of things about, I don't want to mention those things here, because it's, it's so shameful, I cannot say them. You say A, B, C, you have over 10 things, you are on video, you understand, saying one thing about one person, destroying his character and all that, and then you turn back four years later, and then you want to click, click the reset button on our brains, to tell us that we don't have heads, we don't have brains, we are not educated, and that everything you said about this man some years ago, they were all lies, you did it because of politics. Hello. Come on, man. What do you expect? What do you think of us? How do you even school your child? So you mean you can tell them to say A today, and then tomorrow you tell them, no, I never said this. So it is where APC has found itself today. They don't have anything to say. You understand? They, are you, I've never seen where a performing governor is disqualified or is sent out of his own party. It shows the level of arbitrariness of one man. So they have found themselves in a very, very uh, difficult situation, and they do not know how to swim up it. So the only thing they can do now is to swing on straws. All right. Is that Honorable, you are, we need to leave it at that. I but I must sincerely thank both of you, Honorable uh, Washington Osifu and Honorable uh, Osawo uh, Ihoa from Benin. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for your talk today. We keep our tabs on the race uh, ahead of the Edo governorship election. Thank you indeed, everyone, for watching tonight. I'm Sean Kimbalo. Bye-bye.